when I look out there at the stars, mm -hmm. I, from a basic intuition, cannot possibly imagine there's not just alien civilizations everywhere. Yeah. Life is so damn good. Like you said, nature tries stuff out. Yeah. Nature's uh, an experimenter. <laughs> and I just can't, just basic sort of uh, observation, life, uh, you said uh, somewhere that you like extremophiles. Life oh, yeah. just <laughs> figures shit mm -hmm. out. Yeah. It just finds a way to survive. Now, there could be something magical about the origin of life, the first spark, but like I can't even see that. It's just over and over and over. I bet, actually, once once the story is fully told and figured out, life originated on Earth almost right away and did that mm -hmm. so like billions of times uh, mm -hmm. in multiple places, just over and over and over and over. Uh, that seems to be the thing that just whatever is the life force behind this whole thing seems to uh seems to create life seems to be a, a creator of different sorts mm. Mm, yeah the, the the very from the very original primordial soup of things it just creates stuff so i just can't imagine but we don't see the aliens so right yeah we don't even have to go to something as crazy as extra dimensions and brain worlds and all of that what's happening right now in the past 30 years in astronomy looking at real objects is that the number of planets, exoplanets outside our solar system has absolutely proliferated. There are probably more planets in the Milky Way galaxy than there are stars. And now we have a real quandary. Not, I don't think it's a quandary, I think it's really exciting. It becomes impossible, what you just said I totally agree with, it becomes impossible to imagine that life was not sparked somewhere else in our Milky Way galaxy and maybe even in our local neighborhood of the Milky Way galaxy, maybe within a few hundred light years of the Milky of, of, of our solar system. So my, my, my gut says like some crazy amount of uh, solar systems have life, bacteria life somewhere at some point in their history had some bacterial type of life. Something like bacteria, maybe it's totally different kinds of life. Mm -hmm. So th then I'm just facing with the question is like, why have we not clearly seen yeah. alien civilizations. And there, the answer, I, I, just, I, I don't find any great filter answer convincing. There's just no way I can imagine an advanced alien civilization not avoiding its own destruction. I can see a lot of them getting into trouble. I can see how we humans are really like 50-50 here. <laughs> well, isn't that kind of appalling? I mean, just take that statement. We've only been around for like, I mean, couple hundred thousand years tops, you know, um, that is not very long. And we're at a 50-50. I mean, that's unbelievable. I mean, it's indisputable that we have created the means, at least potentially, for our own destruction. Will we learn from our mistakes? Will we uh, avert course and save ourselves? One hopes so, right? But But even the concept that it's conceivable, whales have not invented a way to kill themselves. <laughs> to wipe out all whales and earth <laughs> and life on earth. That's one way to see it, but I, I actually see it as a feature, not a bug, when you look at the entirety of the universe, because uh, it does seem that the mechanism of evolution constantly creates, you want to operate on the verge of destruction, it seems like. I mean, the predator and prey dynamic is really effective at creating at accelerating evolution and development. It seems like us being able to destroy ourselves is a really powerful way to give us a chance to really get our shit together and to flourish, to develop, to innovate, to to uh, go out amongst the stars or 50-50, destroy ourselves. Mm -hmm. But like, which I, I think me as a human is a horrible thing, but if there's a lot of other alien civilizations, that's a pretty cool thing. You want to give everybody nuclear weapons. Uh, half of them will figure it out, half of them won't. I mean, the ones you mean that everyone, out, all these civilizations. <laughs> all these civilizations. Mm -hmm. And then the ones that figure it out will figure out some incredible technologies about how to expand, how right. to develop, and all that right. kind of stuff. Right. You could use a kind of evolutionary Darwinian natural selection on that, where in survival isn't just in a harsh, naturally induced climate change, but it's because of a nuclear holocaust. And so, but, and then, and then something will, will 
be created that is now impervious to that, that now knows how to survive. Yep, exactly. So why haven't we seen them? Right. Well, because that's a pretty big bar. So if you look at the, just to say, for comparison, dinosaurs, uh -huh. you know, 250 million years. I mean, maybe not very bright. <laughs> um, didn't invent fire. Didn't write sonnets. Yeah. They didn't contemplate the origin of the universe, but they, they lived. Mm -hmm. And um, in a benign situation without confronting their own demise at their own hands. Pause. <laughs> Hooves. Um, so it's just a sheer numbers game. That's a long time, 250 million years. I do think, though, that life can flourish without wanting to manipulate its environment. And that we do see many examples of species on Earth that are very long-lived, very, very long-lived. Um, and have very different states of consciousness. They have the jellyfish does not even have a localized brain. Um, I don't think they have a heart or blood. I mean, they're really different from us. Okay, And that's what I think we have to start thinking about when we think about aliens. Those uh, species have lived for a very, very long time. They even show some evidence of immortality. You can wound one badly, and there are certain jellyfish that will go back into a kind of pre-state and start over. So I think we're very attached to imagining creatures like us that manipulate technology. Um, and, um, and I think we have to be way more imaginative uh, if we're going to really take seriously life in the universe. Yeah, they might not prioritize conquest mm -hmm. and expansion. Mm -hmm. They might not be violent. Mm -hmm. They might not be violent. <laughs> like us humans. <laughs> they might be solitary. They might not be social. They might not move in groups. They might not want to leave records. Um, uh, they might, again, not have a localized brain or have a completely different kind of nervous system. I think all we can say about life is it has something to do with moving electrons around. <laughs> and um, like neurologically, we move electrons through our nervous system. Our brain has electrical configurations. We metabolize food, and that has to do with uh, getting energy, electrical energy in some sense, out of um, what we're eating. You know, we have organisms on the earth that can eat rocks. It's quite amazing. Minerals. I mean, talk about extremophiles. They can metabolize things that I would have thought uh, were impossible to metabolize. And so, again, I think we, we have to kind of open our minds to how strange that could be. Um, and how different from us. And we are the only example, even here on Earth, that that does manipulate its environment in that extreme way.